Do you ever have one of those days where you feel stuck? Like the whole world is passing you by? Cut! How did you like that voiceover? Pretty good, huh? I need to hire an agent. Oh boy. That is my interrupting neighbor in his acting debut. Hey bud, don't give up your day job. In this video, I will share how you can create a time-lapse effect in Create Studio Pro like the one you see here. Keep watching and I'll show you how. This is Randy's tips with another Create Studio Pro tutorial. This type of project takes planning. Look for a background and character actions that convey movement. In this example, I chose the brick office background where I can have people walking back and forth in the foreground here and some people working at their desk. Let's start in the foreground with the walkers. I chose Victoria because of her bright yellow jacket and she also has several sitting actions for behind the desk. For each character, you will want to change their action to walking. Move the playhead to a walking pose that you like and then right mouse click and select Take Snapshot. The snapshot will be saved in the project media of my files. Do this procedure for several characters. Tip! You can also take a snapshot of a group of characters walking together. Position each character and then use the group command to group them together before taking the snapshot. To create the time-lapse effect, bring in one of the snapshots. To size and position the snapshot correctly, you will want the character to be larger in the foreground as if they are close to the camera and smaller when positioned by the wall. I will start with Victoria on the right side. This looks like the correct size for Victoria as she is in the foreground. Next, trim the snapshot to three frames. Tip, it will be easier to see this smaller number of frames by extending the timeline by using the timeline size slider at the very bottom. Just click and drag it to the right. Advance the playhead three frames by clicking on the double triangle pointing right three times. Cut the track by clicking on the scissors icon and delete the clip after the cut. Next, add the blur effect to the three frames by clicking on the star in the far left. Click on blur and drag it onto the three frames. I need to move the playhead back to see if the default blur amount is correct and it looks good so far. Make three duplicates of the blurred image. Click and drag the duplicates behind each other on the timeline. Select the second clip. You can tell it is selected with the blue border around the clip and move the character further in the direction it is walking. Do the same for the third and fourth clips, spacing them so it appears she is walking at a constant pace. Tip. When moving a character with your mouse, hold down the shift key will ensure the character only moves right or left and not up and down. I will want to use this sequence multiple times in the video so I will group them together and rename the group Victoria Walking. To use this group again, duplicate the group and move the duplicate on the timeline sometime to the right of the original. In this case, I want Victoria walking from left to right so with the group highlighted, click on the properties in the top right, then click on Flip Horizontally. Let's preview that to see how it looks. Three frames is one-tenth of a second, and as you can see, that goes by pretty quick, but it does a good time-lapse effect. I will fast-forward this part as I repeat the process for the other snapshots. Okay, if your only interest is to generate a time-lapse effect, then you are done. The remaining section of the tutorial will share how to put time-lapse characters behind various background objects and manipulate the background to make the effect more believable. 
This includes changing the clock that says 9.30 to one where the hands move during the time lapse and add darkness for morning and evening. Keep watching if you want to see how that is done. A good background is crucial, and if it has some objects that can move around, that makes it even better. Examine the background track on the timeline. If there are stacked diamonds at the beginning of the track, then your background has a group of items. The brick office background includes some movable objects like the office chair and the stability ball. When you click on the background, notice in the top right there are some images in the settings. Click on the word image to the left of the chair and an image panel will display. You can move the ball by changing the position coordinates and the same thing applies to the chair. The remaining objects will be stationary, but don't fear making some changes to the built-in background. For example, when I move the ball past the cabinet, the ball is behind the cabinet. That is wrong and needs to be fixed. Also, the chair is in front of the right desk and I will want to move it behind that desk. Plus, this planter in the middle will get in my way, so I'm going to shrink that and make it a small plant on the windowsill. I could open the brick office group and make the changes inside the group and then close it, but I will want to have some characters sitting in the chair and on the ball behind the desk, so instead of editing inside the group, I will bring all objects into the main timeline by right mouse click and select ungroup. Okay, there are a lot of tracks, and we need to make the area with the tracks larger so we can see them all. Hover your mouse between the bottom of the canvas and the timeline until the double arrow appears. Click and drag up until all the tracks are visible. Now the canvas is partially hidden, and to fix that, click on the magnifying glass in the top and select Fit. I better move the chair back to the original position. I will shrink the size of the timeline using the slider at the bottom again, and I see the default length of 8 seconds is too short. To lengthen the background, select all the tracks and then hover the mouse on the end of a single track. Mouse click and drag it to the right. To ensure the ball is in front of the cabinet, we need to move the ball track above the cabinet on the timeline. We need to add an empty track above the cabinet. To do that, position your mouse on the empty space on the same track as the cabinet. Right mouse click and select Add Track Above. This will provide space for the ball. Now click on the ball clip and move it above the cabinet. To drag the table right clip above table left, insert an empty track below the walking groups and then drag up table right. Now the chair will be behind either table. Another change I want to make is to get rid of the big planter in the middle because I want some characters in that space. So I will resize it and put it on the windowsill. I know I will have characters sitting in the chair and ball seat, so I will need to create empty tracks above them. Actually, to shrink the tracks so I can make the canvas bigger, I will group the stationary objects together. It is important to ensure the track of tables is above the chair and ball tracks but below the walking characters in the foreground. After reducing the number of tracks, resize the canvas and again click on Fit to fill the canvas screen with the image. Okay, let's bring in Dominic and change the action to working on PC no desk. Size and position him in the chair. To make this an effective time lapse, we are going to reposition Dominic and the chair every three frames. Since the chair will be changing locations, we will need to cut a three frame segment of the chair track. Put the playhead at the first cut and use the scissor icon. Advance three frames and cut the chair track again. To see better, I will stretch the timeline, but this time I will do so by clicking the mouse 
on the frame counter and then drag into the right. Now cut Dominic at the same cut points in the chair and remove the start and end clips. By grouping the three frame Dominic and the chair, I can move them around the desk together. Just as we did with the walking clips, add the burr effect. And since there is less movement, I will reduce the blur to 5%. Make a duplicate of Dominic and chair and move it to the right of the original. Now we can reposition the clips to show movement. On the third duplicate, I will flip the group horizontally so that Dominic is facing the other direction. Oops! I need to trim the original chair image so we don't have two chairs in the image. Okay, move Dominic so that his hands are on the keyboard. There you go! And we can throw in sequences of Dominic sitting and drinking coffee and other sitting poses. I will halt the video here and add the other characters and show you what it looks like after it is all done. Okay, we are back. Let's see what it looks like by manually moving the playhead. It starts off transitioning from dark to light, and that is accomplished by putting a gray rectangle over the canvas and using an animation to transition the opacity to 0% at that end diamond. The other thing you will notice is that the clock has been replaced by one where the hands are moving providing another visual of time rapidly passing. This clock happens to be a Lottie file, and you can learn how to use Lottie files in your Create Studio projects by watching the tutorial Incorporate Lottie Files. A link is provided in the description. Now let's look at where all the time-lapse segments are placed on the timeline. For the characters walking back and forth in the foreground, their clips are on tracks above the tables. For the characters sitting in their workstations, their clips need to be below the table tracks. Then it is a matter of repeating those actions throughout the video. I would duplicate and reuse a lot of the sequences, which saved a lot of time. At the very end, I brought back the gray rectangle to dim the office for the evening. There you go. That is how to create the time-lapse effect in Create Studio Pro. Have a good day and happy creating!